cellulose is the next big frontier. Now cellulose, it, it costs about $1.62 to produce alcohol from cellulose right now. And from starch, it only costs about 90 cents. This is on the industrial scale. So right now, cellulose is considered uneconomical because uh, it would make the price of auto fuel a little bit too high. This is only because gasoline subsidies are buried in our income taxes. If you take a look at all the tax subsidies that oil companies get, and you start to include some of the obvious military subsidies, like for instance, you wouldn't get a single tanker out of the Gulf if it wasn't for $200 billion a year worth of naval presence to, to move $60 billion worth of oil. That's a huge subsidy. In fact, most people studying this come up with figures of between $5 to $15 per gallon, not per barrel, per gallon subsidies out of our taxes to oil companies, depending on what you throw in. You know, to what, you know, what that means. So $5 is like way conservative. 15 is like when you consider not even counting Iraq, just all the military expenditures, um, you know, that go into uh, to making oil happen. Uh, you know, $5 is the current subsidy. Alcohol gets a small subsidy of about 53 cents a gallon right now. So with that, we can be competitive with starch-based alcohol, but cellulose is a, still a little high. But if you were looking, if it was an equal playing field and these guys didn't get this, any of these alternative fuels would be way cheaper than gasoline. But because they hide it in our income taxes, we don't see it. So cellulose right now is really tough stuff to break down. The way it's done commercially is you use, um, you use sulfuric acid, you put it under pressure, the, the cellulose breaks down into sugar and then you can ferment it. New ways of going about it are finding ways of taking the enzymes that used to be produced in the guts of termites and cellulases to break down the, the cellulose to sugar so we can make it into alcohol. And that has gotten suddenly cheap. The enzymes now are down. They used to be 50 cents per gallon of alcohol produced. They're down to a nickel now because the DOE had this competition which said whoever can get there first gets $15 million. And these companies all jumped in to see who could bring the cost of producing cellulase down. With that kind of incentive, they really did it. So as of last year, two companies now uh, can produce the enzymes for five cents a gallon. Nobody's built a plant yet to use it, but when they do build those plants, we ought to be able to get in pretty close to the 90 cents. Why? Because out of the 90 cents, 75 cents is the cost of the corn. The rest of it is the, pr the production price. But when it comes to cellulose, there's no cost. It's just the collection cost. Do you know what the largest crop in the United States is by weight? It's not corn, it's not soybeans. Grass clippings. Grass clippings. We grow more biomass in our lawns and throw it away to the landfill than is produced in all of agriculture. Now there's a day I want to see people fighting over grass clippings to make alcohol with. But grass clippings are great because they're almost pure cellulose. Very little lignin, which is the, the resin binder that makes trees so woody and hard. It's, grass is all soft and floppy. It's almost pure cellulose. You can make great paper out of grass, for instance. You know, it's very, very easy to pulp. So, you know, we start making alcohol out of cellulose. We can produce, according to Barry Commoner, he did this, these figures back in 1982 for me. Um, we could produce 150% of all of our fuel needs from cellulose if we start making a commitment to do it. I mean, we have that amount. So is it sustainable? Can we do it? You bet. When I worked uh, on this question with Bucky, Bucky had been looking at alcohol since Christ, I think the 30s or 40s, Buck, Buckminster Fuller I'm referring to. He, um, he sat down and calculated how much energy we could get from photosynthesis without design. In other words, just looking at the biomass produced on the planet today, how much energy can we get from that? Because, you know, the oil guys are really good at saying, solar energy is so inefficient. Photosynthesis is only 1% efficient at taking solar energy and making carbohydrates. Well, that's a hell of a lot of solar energy. There's a lot of green matter. We could have enough energy from cellulose to power all of human activity, not just the cars, all our electric, electricity, heat, everything, 15 times over every year. 
So why are we using this stuff that's running out that's in short supply? That's a political question. But from a technological point of view, if we design crops for energy production, not just a background cellulosic production, we can get tremendous yields per acre. I mean, for instance, the hemp guys are all, all you know, talking about how there's 60 tons of cellulose per acre in all the stalk and leaf that's left over if you grew it industrial hemp in this country. Well, you know, that's five, let's see, that's 5,000 gallons of alcohol per acre, about 80, 80 gallons a ton. So, uh, um, yeah. And the seed is 18% protein. Oh, yeah, as, as a and food, yeah. It has the right ratio of omega-3s and 6s for humans. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to grow that. But uh, you may have noticed a, a similarity with that crop where it got demonized as a drug and then prohibited. Kind of like back during Prohibition where alcohol was demonized and the drug and prohibited. So they got the playbook right with alcohol and they repeated it for, for hemp. You know, took an industrial product off the market by focusing on its drug characteristics. So, you know, things just keep happening over and over again. It's, it's history again. So, um, and there's a lot of crops better than, uh, better than hemp in terms of cellulose production. Comfrey, oh my God, the amount of biomass you get from comfrey and it's, you know, you can't, once you start growing it, you can't stop growing it, you know. Every little piece of root will just re, you know, re-sprout it. It just, you know, it's a perennial crop. You can mow and mow and mow, you know. Um, so anyway, when we get in, when we talk about the energy we could produce, it's pretty tremendous. Um, let me answer any questions from what we already talked about, and then I'll launch into stuff about the fuel and cars and laws and all of that good stuff. Any last questions from what we've already covered? I just want, I was going to ask, um, what's the gas mileage compared to well, alcohol mileage compared to gas mileage? Good. Well, we'll go, we'll start right there then. Um, 